In this video, we're going to show how to create tables and graphs like the ones in the priority assessment example using Jump. So if you haven't already, make sure you get Jump downloaded by the end of the week. So first, I'm just going to open Jump. Um, I'm going to go to my start menu um, and look for it here. I'm going to use the latest version, um, Jump 15. Um, if you're using a Mac, you're going to want to go to your finder and look in the applications. To open the data set, I'm going to do file open just like I would with an Excel file or something like that. Um, and then I'm going to find where I have the data saved. So I've got it in my Unit 3 folder. Um, in general, if you've just downloaded something, it would be in your Downloads folder. And click Open. Let's start with the tables. So to calculate um, numerical summaries and tables, you're going to do Analyze, Tabulate. And our first question was about um, the distribution of the priority levels. So I'm going to take Priority and just drag that here in the drop zone for Columns. So I can see already the counts of the low, medium, and high priority jobs. Um, if I also want to see the percentages, I can take percent of total and drag that on top, and it'll replace it with the percentages. If you want to see both at the same time, you can do that. Um, you just kind of have to drag it like side by side here. Now I can see the count and the percent for each one. And I will say it takes a little bit of practice with the drag and drop, um, but you'll get used to it. You can always undo if it does something that you don't like. All right, now let's start over and look at the question, do higher priority jobs tend to be finished faster? So here, I'm gonna put the length of the job in days and the drop zone for columns. I do generally put my response variable in the columns, it's just kind of my habit. Um, and then I wanna break that down by priority level. So I'm gonna put that over here in the rows. So the default is to show the sum of the days for each priority level, that's not useful. Um, so I'm going to replace that. I'm going to put mean on top of it and replace it. Um, but I also want to see the median and the measures of spread so that I can make comparisons. So to do that, I can either, like I showed before, sort of hold it off to the side, or maybe an easier way is if you just hold it on top of the numbers like this, it'll actually put them side by side for you. And inner quartile range is down here. It's not abbreviated IQR, so you might miss it. And that's the other table that's in the notes. Now let's look at making the graphs. So my favorite way to make graphs in Jump is just to use the Graph Builder. So you go to Graph, Graph Builder. And I'll start with Priority. I'm going to pull that onto the x-axis. And then I have options up here at the top on this little toolbar for what kind of graph I want. Um, so if I want a bar graph, I can tell it's a bar graph because it has little spaces between them. Also, if you hover over it, it says bar then it'll give me my bar graph there. If I want a pie chart, I just click on the little pie chart. So very easy to get the graphs this way. Now let's start over and look at the other statistical question. Um, so I'm gonna put days on the x-axis this time. Um, and then I like to look at box plots if I'm gonna compare groups. So I click the box plot. And then I can break it down by priority level. And that'll give me the parallel box plots um, that I think are really nice for comparison. So I put the um, quantitative variable on the x-axis here, even though it is the response, just because I kind of prefer horizontal box plots. Um, but actually, you can do it either way, as long as you don't mind reading them vertically. You can also change. You can do like a histogram here. Um, to me, that's a little bit harder to read, especially in this case where the data is so skewed. Um, it's a little bit harder to see. Also, because the sample sizes are all different, it can be a little bit difficult to compare. Um, so box plot kind of takes sample size out of it, which I think is helpful here. And let's look at one more option that sort of gives you both um, graphical displays and numerical summaries all at once, um, and that's Analyze Distribution. So I'm going to pick Analyze Distribution. Um, and if I want to just look at the data all together, um, I can put the number of days in the Y, and I'm going to click OK. And notice this gives me a bunch of stuff. It gives me a histogram, it gives me a box plot, um, it gives me my five number summary, also the mean and standard deviation. Um, I don't like it vertical like this, so I click the little down arrow next to distributions and I pick stack. And to me, that makes it easier to read. But this is kind of nice because it just gives you so much information all at once. So this is looking at um, all of the data together, all 642 cases. Um, if we want to break it up by priority, we can. We still start with analyze distribution and put days in the Y, um, but then priority goes in the buy box. So I sort of think of it like you're breaking it down 
by priority level. So that's why it goes in the buy box. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Again, I like to stack. So this is sort of letting me compare. Also, one thing to notice is that it does actually give them different um, axes, at least by default. You can change the axes if you want. Um, so do be careful making the comparisons there. Um, but again, this is really nice because it gives you all the graphs. It gives you all the numerical summaries without a whole lot of work on your part. So those are the three main tools that we'll be using this week. Um, analyze Tabulate, Graph Builder, and Analyze Distribution.